Hello. <clears throat> Come on in. Good evening, good evening. Hey, everybody. Come on in. Right. Hello, Miss Mary Snow, Amanda. Hello, Renee. Hello, Miss Queenie. Hello, Miss Janie. Hello, Miss Portia. Hello, Miss Renee. Hello, bro. Stanford Newt. What's up, brother? Blessings to you, bro. Wayne. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. How is everybody doing this evening? Hey, 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 come on in. Miss Brownie, hello. All righty. Listen, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for coming in for our Bible study on tonight. Uh, someone can go ahead and type our scripture reference on tonight, which will be 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter four and verse seven. Hope everybody had a good day. Hey, Ms. Gladys. One more time, time, time. One more time, Lord, time, time. Lord, I'm glad to be in service one more time, one more time, 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 one more time, Lord, time, time. And I'm so glad to be in service one more time. Sometimes up, sometimes down. I'm almost level with the ground. And I'm so glad to be in service one more time. Uh, if my mother was here today, and these are the words 
she would say that I'm so glad to be in service one more time. Oh, one more time, time, time. One more time, Lord, time, time. And I'm so glad to be in service one more time. Amen. I'm glad just to be here one more time. Father, we thank you for, again, another opportunity to study your word. And God, we ask now for your spirit, ask for your wisdom and your knowledge and your guidance. God, as we go through this word on tonight, I pray, God, that you would just take the reins of our mind, God, in our hearts that we may receive this word on tonight, which will help us to be better men, women, boys, and girls. Thank you for every person that is tuned in and those that will be tuning in. And God, we just pray that we have an awesome time tonight in your word. God, we ask for you to forgive us for our sins. For this day, God, we have fallen short of your glory. And God, we ask that you forgive us now. And God, I just pray now that you would let us down into the depths of the uh, depths of treasure in, in your word, God, that we may get an understanding. And God, not only that, but we can do what your word says for us not to be hearers only, but to be doers as well. God, we thank you now for this time. And we just ask that you bless it, that we will uh, just receive and just have an awesome time in your word. Holy Spirit, have your way. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah. Can I say it one more time? Oh, one more time, Lord. Time, time. Oh, one more time, Lord. Time, time. And I'm so glad to be in service. One more time. Well, down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, and I know the Lord been good to me. Oh, down through the years. God's been good to me, and he's been better, better to me than I've been to myself. Amen. I had to throw that one in there. Amen. But thank y'all so much again for being on tonight. And we just pray that we just have an awesome time tonight studying his word. Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven which is a very familiar passage of scripture. And it says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Amen, amen. I fought a good fight. I have finished my course and I have kept the faith. Amen. Want to, want to label this Bible study tonight, uh, finish the race. Come on, tell somebody to finish the race. Amen. Let me just go ahead and type that in here tonight. Amen. Finish the race. Amen. Finish the race. Amen. Most of the time when we hear this particular scripture, it's, it's doing uh, a funeral celebration service and uh, where many many of pastors have used this scripture, uh, which pretty much sums up the person who is deceased life, that they have fought a good fight. Uh, and these are for faithful believers. Uh, they finished the course, they kept the faith. And my brothers and sisters, what I wanna share with you tonight is that in the Bible, our Christian walk is compared to many things. Paul, in this text, he compares it as a race. <clears throat> and so we get into, we get in this race, watch this, 
when we accept Jesus Christ as our savior. And sadly, many uh, who, have, who come to Christ think that once they have prayed the sinner's prayer, that's all it is to it. They feel like that once they said the prayer, the prayer of confession and all of this, that, that, <clears throat> that that's the end of it, that they, they secure. But they are so wrong because if it's a race, then it has to be ran. Come on, somebody. Runners, here it is. Don't sit on the sideline. Come on, talk, talk to me. They, they don't preoccupy themselves with other things. A runner runs, and they run well with the finish line and the prize in mind. Amen, somebody. They, 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 don't, they don't sit on the sideline. A runner runs. And so getting into the race is important. Stay with me. But finishing the race is just as important. Let me say that again. Getting in the race is important. It's important. But to finish the race is just as important. Only those who finish, here it is, here's your shout. The only one, the, the only those who finish the race gets the prize. Y'all missing me. You're missing me. You can't finish the race if you're sitting down doing nothing. Oh, I'm preaching already. Amen. Too many folk in church, in the body of Christ, want all the benefits, but don't want to do nothing. Y'all ain't talking to me. Just because you start the race doesn't mean that you will automatically finish it. Y'all ain't talking. There is something that you have to do if you're going to rent it, if you're going to reach, let me say it that way, the finish line. That There's something that you have to do if you're going to reach the finish line. Somebody asked me, what you got to do? What you got to do? Real simple. Here's point number one. This is what you got uh, to do to, 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 to reach the finish line. Number one, you're going to have to stay in the race. That's so simple. That is so simple. That is so simple. You got to stay in the race. You can't give up. Somebody type it. Quitting is not an option. Somebody type that real quick. Quitting is not an option. You can't give up, amen, just because it gets tough. You, you can't give up just because you get tired. You can't give up just because you get weary. Galatians 6 uh, and 9 says, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? You're going to have to stay in the race. I don't care how tired you get. I don't care how frustrated you get. I don't care how down you get. You cannot quit. Quitting is not an option. Amen. Paul told the church, the told the Galatians, be not weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. In other words, if you finish the race, you get a prize. But you cannot give up when you are weary. You got to stay in the race. Come on, tell somebody today, stay in the race, stay in the race. You can't quit. It's easy to quit. Lord have mercy. I still got my tire from Sunday. Lord have mercy. It's easy to quit and throw in the towel. But when you are a bona fide believer, when you are a, 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 a man or woman of God that's been washed in the blood, you realize, that, watch this, that the race is not a sprint. It's a marathon. Y'all ain't talking to me here. In other words, it's a journey. Thank you, Deacon Taylor. I'll never forget it. The journey that we are, the, the, the race that we're in is a journey. It's not overnight. You got to keep running. You got to keep running. Lord have mercy. So number one, you're going to have to stay in the race. Here, here's number two. Number two, number two, you're going to have to keep your eyes on the finish line. Okay, keep your eyes on the prize. If you're looking at the things around you, watch this. It will distract you. Distractions, here, here, here it is, he's about to help somebody. Distractions will cause you to go in another direction. Okay, you don't believe me? Be driving down the highway uh, and, and, and you get distracted and you miss your exit. Now you're big man, you ain't talking to me. Yeah, yeah, you, you might've been on your phone or listening to, caught up in a song that's on the radio and became distracted and you miss your exit. You ain't talking to me here. 
Don't let the noise of the world keep you from hearing God's voice. Somebody type that. I know that's a lot, but somebody needs to type that. Don't let the noise of the world keep you from hearing God's voice. The noise of the world would distract you. Y'all ain't talking to me. Amen. Amen. Uh, let, let's go. Let's go to Psalms. 119, Psalms 119, and verse 15. Psalms 119, and verse 15. Let me get that. Let me get that. It says, I will meditate on your precepts and think about your ways. That's that's from the coming, the coming, the, the, the that's from the Christian Standard Bible. It said, I will meditate on your precepts and I will think about your ways. In other words, my mind, my 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 thought process is 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 on is on the race. I I, I, I it's on God, it's on his word. I will not allow. The, the world distraction to mess with my thought process, to mess with me running my race. So you cannot allow the noise of the world to keep you from hearing God's voice. How do I hear God's voice? I, it's through his word. So you're going to have to keep your eyes on the finish line, keep your eyes on the prize. You remember uh, uh, Peter. You remember Peter. Peter was in, the, uh, the disciple was in the boat. And, and, and uh, Peter, uh, they, they saw Jesus walking on the water. Peter, the bold one, says, Master, if it's you bid me to come to you, I applaud Peter for getting out of the boat. And Peter gets out of the boat, and he's walking on water. He's de he had defied gravity. He's walking on water. And the Bible said he, that the wind blew in. Peter saw the wind. The wind became his distraction. He took his eyes off Jesus, and he began to sink. What in your life, here it is, that has caused you to take your eyes off Jesus? There's some distraction. It may be a man, a man, a woman. It may be your job, your career. There is something that has caused you to be distracted. And I came to tell you, if you don't get it together, listen, you end up somewhere you ain't trying to go because you are distracted. You cannot allow yourself you cannot allow the enemy to distract you while you are running your race so number one uh number one you're gonna have to stay in the race number two you're gonna have to keep your eyes on the finish line number three remember the prize you you are not running in vain there is a prize that awaits you here it is and this prize is not just given to the one that crosses the line first. It's given to all those who finish the race. Let me, let me say that again. Somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. Somebody missed it. You're not running this race in vain. There is a prize that awaits you at the finish line. And this prize is not just given to the one who crosses the, the finish line first but it's given to all those that finish the race. Let's go to Philippians uh, chapter three. Philippians chapter three. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 Philippians chapter three. And verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Uh, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto those things which are before. Here it is. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Do y'all hear what? Did y'all hear what Paul told the church at, at, at Philippi? Paul said, I'm forgetting the stuff that's behind me. That's a distraction. I'm reaching forth to those things which are before me. I press toward the mark for the prize. I'm I, I, it, I, I, I may be tired, but I'm pressing. I, I may be sick, but I'm pressing. May have uh, 
pain in my body, but I'm pressing. My heart may be broken, but I'm pressing. I may be confused in my mind, but I'm pressing. I'm pressing, why? Because I want the prize. Is there anybody that's listening to me? Are you pressing? Are you in the press? That's where the blessing is. The blessing is in the press. God, God sees your faithfulness when you're pressing. He know you're tired. He know you're frustrated. He know, he know you, 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 you're discombobulated. Uh-oh. But you got to keep pressing because that's where, the, that's, that's where the prize is. It's in the press. Paul said, I press toward the mark. Lord have mercy. Come on, somebody. I need y'all to press with me. Press with me. Press with me. You got to remember the prize. You're not running this race in vain. There's a prize. There is a prize. Yeah, so while you're running, remember, uh, there is a prize. Number one, you're going to have to stay in the race. Number two, you're going to have to keep your eyes on the finish line. Number three, Remember the prize. Number four, here it is. Do not get discouraged. Do not get discouraged. Here it is. You may feel like you're not making progress. And you may feel like you should be further along in the race than you are. You may feel like you will never reach the end. And you may even begin to wonder, is it worth it all? You will get there, watch this, if you persevere, Lord have mercy. Persevere means you keep going, you, you, you don't quit, you keep going. You, you'll get there if you persevere. And let me just tell you, it's gonna be worth it all in the end. Uh, Joshua, chapter one and verse nine. Look what, look what it said. Look what, look, look what, it, what they told the job. job. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever I go. Dismayed means discouraged. In other words, he was telling, don't, don't, don't you get frustrated. Don't, don't you be, don't, don't get scared. Don't get discouraged because the Lord God is with you wherever you go. Ain't that good news tonight? I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but you cannot get discouraged. Don't let the devil deceive you. Uh, don't, don't, don't let him deceive you to make you think it's not worth it. Uh, 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 the reality is a lot of us should be further along than where we are. I, I get that because of some of the decisions we made because uh, of, of some things we've done, we should be further along. But just because I'm not where I think I ought to be does not mean I get discouraged and quit. Come on, somebody. You cannot allow the enemy to confuse you and make you discouraged. Listen, you gotta, you, you have got to persevere because in the end, it will be worth it all. So you can't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Lord have mercy. You got you're gonna have to stay in the race. You're gonna have to keep your eyes on the finish line. You're gonna have to remember the prize. Number four, don't get, get discouraged. Here's number five. Here's number five. Take notice of how you are running the race. Oh, this is good right here. You can't run. Lord have mercy. You can't run it all over the course and think you'll wind up at the finish line. Oh, have mercy. You must run well. You must stay focused. You must keep up the pace. Y'all ain't talking to me. You can't keep stopping and then starting. Oh, I'm meddling now. You can't decide to run for a while and then quit, run for a while, then quit, run for a while and then quit, run for a while, then quit. Y'all y'all ain't talking to me. You got to stay consistent. Somebody type it, be consistent, be consistent. There is no way, you, you, cannot, you cannot effectively run this race 
by starting and quitting, by, 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 by uh, 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 running all over the place. You got to be consistent. Am I talking to somebody? Am I hipping somebody? I'm hipping myself. You cannot be all over the place and think you're going to get there. Lord have mercy. You, if you all over the place, you wearing yourself out. If you all over the course, you must run it well. Somebody type that, run it well. You must run it well. You must stay focused. You must keep up the pace. You cannot keep stopping, starting, quitting, starting. Y'all the law have mercy. Run, quit. Y'all, you can't do that. You must be consistent. Uh, first, uh, first Corinthians. Chapter 15, very familiar passage of scripture. And verse 58. Lord have mercy. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Listen, Paul, Paul, Paul telling the, the, the folks at Corinth, be steadfast, be consistent. Y'all ain't talking to me here. Be consistent. Don't don't start don't don't do all of this this start quitting stuff and uh don't don't do all of this uh uh start stop run quit you can't do all of that be consistent take take notice of how you run in the race. So my question tonight, got a couple questions for you. Do you need to check your pace? Do you need to take a look at the way you are running? Are you still running or have you allowed distractions to come in and take you off course? Uh-oh. Maybe somebody that's listening have quit altogether. You have to start the race to get in it. Lord have mercy. But finishing it is the goal. Start the race. Run the race well. Finish the race. And then you receive the prize. Am I talking to anybody tonight? Well, may, may, here, here it is. I, I got your solution. I got your solution. Uh, I went to Mississippi Valley State University, uh, home of the Delta Devils. Uh, you Jacksonians know, know about us. Uh, but when I was there, uh, Coach Lafayette Stribling believed in conditioning. Uh, you, you could not play for him if you were not uh, in shape. And uh, we would go to the track and we, uh, we, we start out running four miles. And, uh, and when you would take one of those curves on the track, uh, we, we called this thing, it, it was this thing we called the bear. Uh, it would jump on your back. And, and when the bear jumped on your back, you felt like you weren't going to make it. Lord have mercy. But, but there, there, there's this thing, and here's your shout, and I'm, and I'm closing it. There was this thing called the second wind. Peace, Marcus, man. Uh, just when it looked like you weren't going to make it, uh, just, just when it looked like you was about to give up, all of a sudden you 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 would catch your stride back. Your your hands would start moving the way they were supposed to move. Lord have mercy. What happened was you caught your second wind. I'm, I'm preaching, y'all. Uh, he, here's what that means. It, it means that my body is so designed that I know when I haven't reached my destination that I, Lord have mercy, and my body starts to give out, watch this, enzymes start to be released inside of me 
And all of a sudden, everything starts to percolate in me and I get a second win. Is there anybody listening to me tonight? Can, can, can you shout tonight that God will give you a second win? Y'all ain't talking to me here. Let's take it on home. H has God ever given anybody? I feel a hoop in me, y'all. I'm trying not to do it. It's Sunday. It ain't Sunday morning, but I feel it. But has any, any, is there anybody that's listening to me tonight? Has God ever given you a second win? Just when the devil thought he had you, just when you were about to quit, Lord have mercy, just when you thought you were done with life, all of a sudden, Lord have mercy, I feel the shift, y'all. You got your second win and you felt like going on. Listen, God has the power to give you a second win. And I, and I came tonight to speak to somebody that's listening on here. You may be at home. You may be at the funeral home. I see your games. Uh, uh, you, you may be on your, on your way home, regardless of where you are. I just came tonight to tell you, yeah, you cannot give up. You got to finish the race. You, you cannot quit. You cannot throw in the top. God is about to release some stuff that's going to give you a second win. I, I know you're tired. I know you're tired. I know you're tired. But God is about to release some things for you and give you your second win. Your battle is not over, Lord have mercy. Your life is not over, Lord have mercy. Depression will not win. Frustration will not win. Uh, chaos will not win. Preach, Marcus, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody just lift up your hands right where you are and get your second win. Come on, just throw your hands up where you are and get your second win. Get you a second win for your marriage. Preach, Marcus, man. Get you a second win uh, for your children. Get you a second win to stay on that job. Get you a second win to go back to school. Get you a second win to get out of debt. Lord have mercy. Get you a second win to serve in the kingdom. I know you're tired. Lord have mercy. Yeah, yeah. I, I know you feel like giving up. Lord have mercy. But God is getting ready to give you the second win. Thank you, Reverend James Cleveland. He said, I don't feel no way tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me that the road would be easy, but I done got my second win, Lord have mercy. And I don't believe he brought me this far to lead me. I need somebody that's listening to me tonight, Lord have mercy, that's ready for your second win. Now, now you do know what the win represents. Y'all ain't talking to me here. Yeah, Lord have mercy, you do know what the wind is in the Bible. The wind in the Bible represents, got my child, the Holy Ghost. Lord have mercy, y'all better find you something. I keep my child nearby me. Yeah, that means that God is about to give you his spirit. He's about to breathe, hallelujah. He's about to breathe into you his spirit and you're about to get a jump start from the Holy Ghost. Do I have any witnesses on here? And when the Holy Ghost gets you, you will stand up, Lord have mercy, when you should fall. You'll run when you should faint. You'll smile when you ought to be crying. You'll rejoice when you're mad. Anybody on here ready for your second win? Lord, have mercy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need somebody to get ready. Yeah, for your second win. Get the devil off your back. Lord, have mercy. And run your race. You ought to throw your head back and say, I feel my second win. Do I have anybody on here that feel your second win? I feel my second win. Lord have mercy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to close it right here. You remember when Jesus was walking the cavern with the cross. Lord, he, he stumbled and he fell. Yeah, yeah. He was tired. Lord have mercy. Yeah, but God had somebody prepared to help him to carry it. And when he got to carry it, they hung him high, stretched him wide. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And before he died the bible said he gave up the ghost that was his lord y'all ain't talking to me he gave up the ghost he went down in the grave lord have mercy but he got his second win because early sunday morning he got up with all power in his hand thank god for jesus when you feel like you ain't gonna make it I need you to throw your head back and tell God, God, I need my second win. 
Lord, I'm waving my towel, y'all. Yeah, I need my second win. I need my second win. Lord, have mercy. Lord, I need it. I'm tired. I, I'm frustrated. Uh, I, I feel like throwing in the towel, God, but give me my second win. And when God gives you your second win, when he jump starts you with the Holy Ghost, Lord, have mercy. Lord, you'll take out running like you ain't never ran before because God has placed his spirit inside of you. Lord have mercy, finish the race. Lord have mercy, finish the race, finish the race, finish the race. You can't quit. You come too far uh, to turn around. You, you, you can't quit. Quitting is not an option. Lord have mercy. I got my second win. Ha <laughs> ha. I got my second win. Lord have mercy. Uh, it ain't going to be easy. But when you run your race, uh, you got to stay in the race. You're going to keep your eyes on the finish line. You got to remember the prize. Don't get discouraged, but pay attention how you run. And when you feel like you can't go no further, just throw your head back and say, Lord, give me. Oh, I ain't trying to go here. Give me mm, my second win. Uh, the devil is riding me uh, like I got a saddle on my back, but Lord, I just believe if you give me my second win. Uh, mm, I believe that I can finish the race. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, Y'all heard it before. The race is not given to the strongest man. Uh, yeah, it's not given to the fastest man, but it's given to the one that can endure, I ain't going here, to the end. Uh, I just need somebody to just throw your hands up and say, Lord, give me my second win. I feel like, Lord, I can make it if you give me my second win. Do I have a witness here? Because the Lord, Lord have mercy. Y'all ought to know the Lord is able. If anybody know he's able? If you know he's able, you ought to just shout where you are and say, the Lord is able because Lord have mercy. I've been there before where I wanted to quit throwing the tire, give up, but the Lord was able and he gave me my second win. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Finish the race. Finish the race. Finish the race. <laughs> Finish the race. Ah, oh, finish the race. Get your second win. Get your second win. Finish the race. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for every person that's listening tonight. God, I don't know where they are individually in this, in this race, but God, I just believe if they can get a second win, they can go on a little bit further. I pray, God, that every person that's listening uh, we'll get their second win. No matter how tired they are, frustrated, but God give them that second win. Lord have mercy. Because Lord, we realize that we, we got to be able to fight back here and fight against the enemy. And Lord, I pray that you strengthen us. I pray God that you will stabilize us. And God, I declare tonight, Satan has no authority. And we tell Satan tonight, it is written, Lord have mercy. Because we remember when Jesus was in the wilderness, being tempted of the devil, every time he dealt with Satan, Jesus said, it is written. So God, we use those words tonight and we decree and declare by faith, Satan, it is written. You have no authority. We got our second win. Uh, I pray, God, you bless every person that's listening. Bless them right where they are. And God, I pray you forgive us for those times we started and we stopped or we ran and we quit. But God, we in here, we in here for the long haul. And we realize, God, that with you, we'll cross the finish line. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, thank y'all so much for coming in. I got my towel.
It's something about this tile, y'all. I got my second win, Lord have mercy. Thank y'all so much for joining in. Paul told Timothy, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I kept the faith. Don't y'all give up. Don't throw in the towel. I love y'all. Until next time, be blessed.